Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Good morning, good morning. It is Sunday, September 29th, and this is the Week 5 College Football Recap Show. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all of the wonderful podcast apps. If you would, comment, leave a review, subscribe, all those things, share the show out. Man, Chris, we had a, an eventful but not super exciting weekend of college football, right? Yeah, I, 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 there was one game that I was all in on, came all the way down to the wire. One of the most, uh, I guess, sketchy, risky field goals to win it. Um, and then after that game, man, there just really wasn't much. No, there really wasn't. And there wasn't a whole hell of a lot before that game either. No, there really wasn't. Uh, the, the Clemson-North Carolina game, and we'll, you know what, let's go ahead and start off with that. Let's start okay. there. All right. This is number one. We do a starting 11, and then we do like a top 10 at the end. We'll, we'll have an extra point here and there. So it, it, we say it's a starting 11, which means we're going to have 11 topics. The, Sometimes the, it's more. It's going to be 35 points. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, all right. So let's start with number one. Clemson 21, North Carolina 20. North Carolina outplayed Clemson yesterday. Now, now this was an exciting game that I didn't give credence to when referring to the good games of yesterday. Yeah, and it, well, the part of that is North Carolina went and lost to Wake Forest, and they lost to App State the two weeks prior to this, right? Absolutely, yeah. So you're thinking, all right, Clemson should – and it was a 27-point line. You know, it right. just – Clemson has more athletes. Clemson has a, a better team, you would think, and it – Maybe North Carolina had just been saving up everything. Maybe. Uh, yeah. total, total yardage, Clemson 331, UNC 290. It was a it, it came down to a two-point conversion at the end of the game because North Carolina scores with what, like a minute 15 left, something like that, and they decide that they want to go for yes. two to go on and win the game. And I think that was absolutely the right decision. Well, their, their defense has played great the entire game. There's no reason they think we're going to give up a touchdown in a minute, you know, 20, 30, whatever it was, to, to lose this thing because they haven't given up many touchdowns at all or field goals. Yeah. So, so and, and Clemson had already missed a field goal earlier. But in that spot, I, I could understand going for it because you are the underdog. You are at home. You have three yeah. yards to gain. To get the win, basically, it's a it's a hundred percent the right call. Yes, regardless of see, so many times we want to wait and see how it turns out to say is it the right call or the wrong call. No, when you're a thirty point dog to a team that hasn't lost in two years, this is the right call. Yes, yes. So I, I don't two fault games them to two unranked opponents. I don't this fault right them call. at all for going for two here. Uh, let's talk about. Clemson a little bit because North Carolina absolutely played you know great right it it by great I mean the standard that was set the, correct you don't expect them to play this well against Clemson but man like what has happened to Travis Etienne he he rushed for two hundred and five yards in the first game and has not topped seventy six yards since then and I I don't think it's because of teams focusing on him I think that this is we came into this season thinking Trevor Lawrence was going to be tit for tat with Tua all day long. The the defenses that they're playing are not incredible. They're, no. They're just not. I don't know what's going on with this offense. The defense looks fine. They don't look bad. They, they're they not as dominating and as they, they don't put the fear of God in you like they did last year, but they're playing just fine on their end of the side of the ball. Yeah. It is the offense, which I thought this year the defense was going to take a massive step back because of all the talent they lost, and the offense was just going to be a machine that just keeps on going because last year they put up 50-something points a game every week. Yeah, it, it, well, especially once Trevor Lawrence went in. Like Lawrence well, yesterday, Trevor 18 Lawrence out of 30. Once, once they got to him and that was the team they had, 
they were rolling. Like, they were killing everybody. Lawrence was 18 out of 30 yesterday, 206 yards, one touchdown. Yeah, he was barely 50%. Yeah, he... A little little over 50% throwing the football. Yeah, it just didn't look great. But he hasn't looked great in any game so far this season. Nope. It, it's, when it's, they played A and M, they didn't have a single drive, and now we're seeing what A and M really is. Yeah, and we'll they get to that later. They didn't have a single drive where they just pounded them. They made good plays. It was all busted plays. It was all seventy something yard touchdowns. Last night, one of the touchdowns was like a thirty six yard bomb that that you know pass guy took off running wide open. Yeah, T Higgins. And they're just big plays. And at some point in time, if you want to be this dominating football team, you, you can't just live and die on big plays. You need big plays to get through games sometimes, but that can't be your only offense, man. Yeah. At some point in time, you got to be able to put a sustainable drive together, put your foot on somebody's throat, and go out there and beat them. You've got the running back. You've got the offensive line. You've got the quarterback. Like you got the receivers. I have no idea why they can't do it. Maybe not can't, but why they haven't done it. Yeah. No, I agree with you. So, and <laughs> your uh, your video has been deciding to freeze on us. Um, yeah, yours is too. So, I don't know if it's me or you because it's not saying me and mine that my internet's down. So uh, Who knows? Who knows? It, it it looks fine over here. I mean, I'm like, I, I'm rocking and rolling. So, it, it, and right now, you're you're coming across fine. Uh, let's move into topic number two here. Um, let's talk about the Heisman Trophy stats so far, right? I've got okay. six guys listed, and I'm just going to run through them, and then we can we can chat about it, you know, after that. Tua has got 25 touchdowns, 1,763 total yards, no interceptions so far. Justin Fields, 23 touchdowns, no interceptions, 1,314 total yards. Joe Burrow, 18 total touchdowns, two interceptions, 1,570 total yards. And by the way, this is all still in September. Like, this is absurd. Well, Burrow's I mean, got those numbers. He's got, like, Joe had a bye week last week. Yeah, so Joe. He's got one less game. Joe's got those with one less game. Jalen Hurts, 17 total touchdowns, 1,738 total yards. He's got one interception. Chuba Hubbard. Now let's move into the running backs because Chuba had himself a day yesterday. 128, yeah, he's unbelievable. Chuba, 128 carries, 938 yards, 10 touchdowns. And then Jonathan Taylor, who didn't look great against Northwestern, but still got for, you know, 100 yards. He is 84 carries, 559 yards, 8 touchdowns. Chuba Hubbard, having almost 1,000 yards in the first month of the season, I think this guy's going to be special. I just think he's 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 just a joy to watch. Yeah. Have we seen a Gundy offense that's had a running back this good? I don't think so. I mean, what's they crazy, they had Justice Hill last year. In the NFL. They, they always have some big, crazy, athletic, stud wide receiver. They had I, Justice Hill last year who everybody thought was better than Hubbard. Well, and, we, and, and we thought their running game was going to take a step back because they lost Hill. Yeah. Oh, it, man. No, we, we were wrong. Give me the rock. He is he, 10 touchdowns, 938 yards in the first month of the season is absurd. Just absolutely absurd. Uh, Tua's numbers, everybody's talking about Justin Fields because, like, he has a, a, the big game against Notre Dame or against uh, Nebraska last night. I mean, and, and this is really all that we'll bring up about the, about the Nebraska game. Good gracious. Did they just destroy that football team? And we we knew it going in. Nebraska is not a good. They are a name that people know, and they are a name people know because of something they did not ten years ago, not twenty years ago, but twenty five to thirty years ago. Yeah, that, I mean they played in a national championship game in what two thousand one, which was eighteen years ago, but but it, it was really in the mid nineties. When, when they were really dominant. And, yeah, everybody loves Scott Frost and all that, but they were not ready for that primetime spot. Not not yet. So they – I was – My only thing is, is I'm ready to see these guys get into league play, okay? Because not to rain on the parade, 
Tua hasn't played a defense worth a damn yet. Not not worth a damn. I would like to see the rankings on all the defense they've played. And Ohio State, the exact same thing. That Nebraska team, I don't think that's the best thing they've played. I think Cincinnati's better than them. He did yeah. against Cincinnati, too. But I don't know that Cincinnati's great. Like, I, I just don't know that these guys have been challenged yet. At some point in time, they're going to have to play Michigan, who is a really good defense still. They're going to have to play Wisconsin. That's only the play. They're going to have to play Penn State, and we'll get Michigan State. We'll see how they fare against defenses that hit them in the mouth. I don't think they're going to take steps backwards by any stretch. They're, they're not going to throw six no. touchdowns and for, for 500 yards on those teams. I no, they, they won't have video game stats on, on those. Um, but at, to be fair, like football is changing, and it is it, the teams that you would expect to have really good defenses, you know, LSU, Alabama – I mean, th- these teams are, are built differently than they used to be. See, I, I think so much of that's game theory and, and, and game, uh, like the way the game is playing now. I, I really do. Like, people crapped on LSU because Vanderbilt scored 30 on them, and they were like, Georgia only gave up six points to them. Yeah, but LSU scored 66, and Georgia only scored 30. So, yeah. So, all right, like, at the end of the day, the margin of victory difference is 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 better one way than the other, and it and it doesn't really matter when Alabama and LSU play. I I will be shocked if that's a fifty to fifty ball game. But those teams are going to get real conservative. The the scoring is going to go way down. The defenses are going to step up, and and that's going to be a different game. I might be wrong, but if both of those teams are in the thirties and the forties, I'll be shocked. That's I I could see it being in the thirties. Uh, you you get much more than that in. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I would be shocked, but I do think, I think that these defenses are just fine. I just think they're blowing teams out, so they're not playing. They're not blitzing everybody, and they're not bringing the house, and they're playing soft uh, uh, coverages. Yeah, and 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 it's just, and then the other teams are so far behind that they're just desperate, and they're they're getting big plays here and there. Yeah, it doesn't matter because they're down by twenty anyway. Yeah, no, I I agree with you. I do agree with you. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Next topic. And good gracious, was this ridiculous? Look, <laughs> Auburn fifty six, Mississippi State twenty three. The Gus Bus beat the Bulldogs like they stole something. I mean, it was ridiculous. This was this was like the bowl game against Purdue. Auburn was up forty two to nine at the half. They scored on their first play from scrimmage. Yes, sir. And this, along with you know Mississippi State's Bulldog getting hit, you know Bully got hit by Booby Whitlow early in that game and had to be removed from the uh, the side of the field. Um, this feels like 2010 and 2013 Auburn. Like, Tony, this is... Tony, this Auburn team is good. Yeah, now, you, you saw it. Alabama and Georgia and LSU, and that is a hellacious run. Yes. And they got Florida, too. Holy crap. They got Florida this week. That's where game day will be. Yeah. Uh, which I think, to be fair, is, is legit where game day should be. We disagreed oh, with no, their choice last no, week. No question. But uh, that's this. Just they got a gauntlet. But what happens after that doesn't matter. What they've done right now, crazy impressive. How uh, how crazy is it? Mississippi State went from having like the number two defense in the country last year overall, and that's efficiency, total yards, everything else. And this year, Auburn outgained them five hundred seventy eight yards to three thirty four, and that's with Auburn losing three fumbles in the ball game. I was just about to say Mississippi State won the turnover battle and got housed. Raced. Yeah, they got housed. Uh, that was. I, 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 let me. I'm. I'm gonna stand on right on that. Listen, we say a lot of things. Some things we get right. Some things we get big, 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 big wrong. I understand <laughs> that. I am a hundred percent right that Joe Moorhead is and will be a huge embarrassing failure. I th- you're. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably absolutely right. Absolutely right on that. And the AD rushed the hire. And and the only solace that I have for my Mississippi State fans, I was texting some last night, was is it could be worse. Jeremy Pruitt could have said yes. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right and about that. Him the job. Now, if I'm evaluating that athletic director, now what he's done with the baseball and basketball and women's basketball programs and football over the last years, he's one of the best ads in the SEC. This is a total joke by saying this. But the fact that he offered the job to Pruitt, and he wanted Pruitt, and we see how bad that hire would have been. And then, now, do we know that he's one of the best ads though? 
I mean, remember Scott Strickland was there forever, and he went to Florida. What he's and and a lot of this has to do with, I guess, money influx of money being brought into that uh, athletic department through through donors and stuff. But their baseball program, I mean, oh, it's fantastic. They had a coach. They had a coach that took them farther in the College World Series than they've ever gone. They let that guy go, hired somebody else, and the new guy took the like he's. He's building some of their women's basketball programs. I know nobody in the country cares about that stuff, but the AD cares. Yeah, and yeah. men's basketball is, I mean, they made the NCAA tournament last year. They they yes, lost. Men's basketball is, but, is finally getting back to where it used to be. Um, it, it, I do think he's a good AD. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to crap on him too much, but in football, he he tried to hire one guy yeah. that seems to be really bad. Thankfully, that guy didn't want the job, and, and he did hire another guy, all because he's rushing stuff. Just because yeah. he, he wanted that two weeks of, of early recruiting, which I just think is dumb. No, I, I agree with you. You made a five-year decision because of two weeks. I said it the day it happened. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You've, you've been pounding that, uh, pounding that book for a while. All right, let's move on. Topic number four, Baylor. Baylor 23, Iowa State 21. This was the second best game of the day behind Clemson, North Carolina, I think. Oh, this is a better game. Come on, Matt Rule. Come on, Matt it's, Rule. Oh, Ed Matt Rule definitely uh, definitely played well. Definitely, uh, well, I mean, he didn't play, but, I mean, that team was legit prepared. They were ready to go. Baylor was up 20 to nothing in the fourth quarter. They went oh, down 21 to 20 with 345 left. Then they hit their first field goal of the season with uh, with 21 oh, seconds left game. to win 23 to 21. They moved to 4-0. But here's the stats for the quarterbacks. Brock Purdy, 27 out of 45, 342 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Charlie Brewer was 26 out of 45, 307 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. This was a well-played, yes. excellent, well-coached football game from from the beginning to the end. It was I've great. I've got to give so much credit to both these teams just for the fact that on-field temperatures when that game started was 120 degrees. I barbecue a lot. We cook shit at 120 degrees. <laughs> and they were out there for four hours. Yeah. I mean, it's like just ridiculous. It's just, I, I, I they, no way I could have done that. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't have been coaching. I'd have, I'd have, I'd have, had, to, I'd have had a squirt or something come up that day. I'm staying in the locker room. I ain't doing it. That's, That's insane. Uh, I'm with you. Hey, McLean Both Stadium, by the way, guys. in Waco, like McLean Stadium looked really good. Like, yes. that is a very underrated stadium. No, when it gets cooler, I'd really like to go there at some point in time if you ever want to make that trip. That stadium's, like, on an island. They, like, built an island for it. It's got, like, this <laughs> lake around. Man, that's awesome. I agree. I Man, agree. I mean, that all sounds fun. I want to do it, like, the end of October. Yeah, 100%. Call me, call me the 1st of November. All right, let's move in. Topic number five. Let's talk about... Notre Dame and Oklahoma joining the 900 win club. Now, obviously, we're not big on on uh, stuff that has happened in the past. But when you're talking about the upper elite and the people that are blue bloods and the reason why they're blue bloods, etc., the reason that we talk about these kind of teams all the time is because of their history of winning all the time, right? So, okay. Notre Dame and Oklahoma both get to 900 all-time wins on the same day. Now, Notre Dame technically hit it years ago, um, or they would have gotten there before now if they had not had to vacate 21-whatever wins. Uh, Alabama would have more. Ohio State would have more. This is, this is so stupid. All of these teams would have more. Michigan has 956 overall. Ohio State, 916. Texas, 911. Alabama nine ten Nebraska. Can we can we pause? Can I just pause? I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, go ahead. Gary, go back and look at those Michigan wins. I'm not exaggerating because I heard a podcast this week that talked about this. Like they would invite like like just communities. It was just like the 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 Toledo you know bar league would come into Michigan. They would teach them to play football one week. Then they would play the game the second week. And they would and count it. And like 120 of Michigan's wins. Can we please can we please stop with this? That's, Anything it, that happened before 1970 just didn't happen in a record book. It just didn't happen. It, it shouldn't have. I'm with you. But because it isn't a record book and because these are the elite teams, we're going to talk about it. So, so all those ne- Alabama seasons didn't exist? Nebraska. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> Nebraska got to 900 last week, which is why everybody talks about them, right? We talked about college game day shouldn't have been there. Nebraska. They still shouldn't have been there. But Nebraska, all-time great program. Oklahoma and Notre Dame both get there yesterday. Oklahoma 55-16 to over Texas Tech. Notre Dame 35-20 to over Virginia. We'll talk about that in just a second. The next in line. Now, you'll be, you'll be interested in this. Penn State is at 895. They need five more wins this season to get to 900. After that, USC and Tennessee both have 839. Georgia has 823. LSU has 804. Auburn, 772. And then behind that, of all of the college football programs that are great, etc., West Virginia has 750. I was kind of surprised by that. Um, so we'll jump off that. I didn't mean for that to be like a, a super long thing or for you to get irritated about the fact that I was bringing it up. But I, I think it's a worthless thing to talk about. It, it may be, but it does kind of give you an idea as to why people still talk about Notre Dame, still talk about Nebraska. Well, they talk about Notre Dame because Notre Dame's really good, and they're still relevant. They do, but even when matters. they're not good, they still get talked about. Their history doesn't matter from the 19, you know, 10s. It does matter as far as having a big-time fan base that still gives a crap about them even when they suck. That touchdown Jesus has to do with their big-time fan base. That, that's sure. a part of it, but they were no, nationally a gigantic it's all, it's team. All the it's, it's all a- the collar. It's all the collar. You underestimate a tradition. A guy who was raised by people who don't know anything about football. They don't even like football, but I was taught you don't ever cheer against Notre Dame. You don't ever bet against Notre Dame. This hey, is what I was yeah, but that, that's don't watch the sport. That's a religious thing. I, I'm with you, but it's not just Notre Dame. It's also Alabama, Nebraska, etc. That's why these fan bases are so big because they have been historically great forever. They've built up fan bases all through the years, and it's been passed on. So that that's why they are still talked about in the same thing. Let's talk about Notre Dame for a minute against Virginia. Look, early on, it looked like Virginia was going to, like the Banner Society tweeted. Virginia may be out athleting Notre Dame. And after such a gigantic ball game in Athens last week with Georgia and Notre Dame, it was easy to see some kind of a letdown coming. Man, look, Virginia outgained Notre Dame 338 to 322, but Notre Dame held Virginia to four yards rushing on 29 attempts, and they forced five turnovers, which turned into the majority of their points. Like, there were very few sustained drives for Notre Dame, but they got a big-time win here. I think this is going to be a bigger win than than people are looking at it as right now. Oh, I do, too. I think this is the the team that Clemson's going to play in the, in the, in ACC, the championship. ACC championship game. I think Virginia's a really good program. I think Notre Dame showed there's a different class of talent at Notre Dame than there is at Virginia over the course of the game. Those takeaways... The, yes, they were getting out athleted early, but as the game went on and got longer and longer, they they showed up. They kept hitting. Virginia kind of was taking some body blows and, and eventually just kind of fell apart um, and, and lost control of, of, of the game. Yeah. Um, I think Virginia's really good. I think this is, and I've said it last week, after the loss to Georgia, this is the best Notre Dame team Brian Kelly has had. And this is the best Notre Dame team we may have seen in, I don't know, 15 years. It's quite some time. This, this Notre Dame team is legit. That loss to Georgia is going to crush them, I think, because I think we're going to have a lot of really good one-loss teams or undefeated teams trying to get into the playoff this year. And and I, I they need Georgia to be undefeated, and they need their only loss to be to the undefeated Georgia team. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. But they're I, really good. This is the year they actually do belong. No, I, I, I think I agree with you there. And I think they've belonged in the past. Let's uh let's move on to topic number six. We'll move to Friday night. Arizona State 24, Cal 17. That's it. At, at the end of September, there are no more Pac-12 undefeated teams. Cal quarterback Chase Garber uh, left the, the game with a shoulder injury. It, these are two teams that like to play slow, ugly football, and it came down to that to get the win. ASU and Cal both sitting at 4-1. and one. Washington has one loss. Oregon has one loss. Um, 
Utah has one loss. Like, this was an ugly football game and it's also a beautiful football game. It goes down, it's over for them. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Daniels, uh, it didn't have great stats in this, but I, I don't think anybody's going to have great stats against Cal. But he did what he needed to do to get that win. And I'm telling you, like Arizona State, Herm Edwards and that bunch, that's a good football team, man. Like they are – Oh, yeah. it, with all of these teams sitting at four and one, you know, three and one, whatever it is, counting on buys, I'm I have no idea what direction the back twelve is gonna go. Well, Absolutely I, I, no I idea. A, I, I feel really good about my opinion of this. I think it's the same two horses that it was to begin with. I think Oregon, once again, they, they like Notre Dame. If if Auburn runs this table and they run the gauntlet that they've got and they finish undefeated. And Oregon beats the hell out of everybody in the Pac-12. They get to raise their hand and say, "Excuse me, we, we still belong. We <laughs> yeah. still belong." And and then the other side of that is Washington. Washington has a bad loss on their record, but well, but it's not a bad loss. Pac-12. I'm not talking like, about nationally. Are they getting in the playoffs? No, that's not happening. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think Washington's still a really good football team that got got that yeah got caught weather delay. And, all of that kind of mess. I think that caught Chris Peterson off guard, and now the rest of the year they play Oregon is going incredible football game. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Let's move on. Number seven, we're going to stay on Friday night. Duke 45, Virginia 10. I want to know who in Blacksburg decided to piss off David Cutcliffe. That's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> Duke ran a fake punt on fourth and three at the 50 when they were up 38-10 to 10 with 8 minutes and 41 seconds left. Look, Duke outgained Virginia Tech 422 yards to 259. The Blue Devils had 234 rushing yards in this game. I, I think it's, it's a fair question to ask if Duke may be the second-best team in the ACC. Uh, now, there's, all, there's undefeated Wake Forest, which we will get to here in a minute, but... Man, on on the other side of this, I think Fuente is in major trouble. Like oh, he's no doubt about that. Oh, he that is. It, that if, is a lock. I think Fuente's out. I, I maybe he's just out of his league, and if he comes back to a conference USA or an American team, he could be great. If I was a team struggling on offense, I'd hire him as an OC tomorrow. But I don't think he lasts after this season. Now, Virginia Tech is not the kind of program that fires people in the middle of a season. But I don't, I don't think he'll be there after this year. I think you're probably right. Uh, as this far is what as I love to, I hate seeing it. At, how about how about Duke though? At, they oh, no. for Duke, Duke uh, unbelievable. Like, listen, the ACC needs either Duke or Virginia or Wake Forest to run the table. If not all three of them to kind of only lose to each other, or when they play Clemson, if they want to get Clemson in, into the playoffs to have any kind of viable, our strength of schedule is not too bad. Yeah, because right now, that's it, and and I think Virginia is really good. But I don't, you know, I've I could see him losing the Duke. Play so up and down. Yes, I mean I Virginia agree. Tech just might be that bad. I, it's I, I think it's possible. I think it's I think it's likely at this point. I would love to give Cutcliffe that kind of credit. We love Cut, but at the end of the day, man, he might have just beat up on a bad team. It's, I mean, I, I give Ohio State a lot of credit for what they did last night. At the end of the day, I mean, it's so different than the wins that they have already going into not last night. They've yeah. beaten teams better than Nebraska already. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I, I do agree with you there. I, it was just super surprising. Super surprising to watch on Friday. Let's, uh, let's keep in the ACC, but let's move over to uh, Saturday night. Florida State 31, NC State 13. I, can I call him the Seminole Savior at this point? I don't know. Alex don't know. Hornibrook, 29 out of 40 last night, 316 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Overall, since he came in for an injured James Blackman the week before, he is 44 out of 60, 571 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. This team is better with Hornibrook at quarterback than they were with Blackman. Now, the question is, what does that say about the coaching staff if they got this wrong from the jump? So, hang on. it's not just Florida State that we need to crap on for that because that's that's what I want to talk about. Why is it that we're talking six or seven teams in college football this year have lost their starting quarterback 
And the guy that comes in behind them is not just a little better. They seem to be head and shoulders better than the guy who's starting. Yeah. And why the hell do these coaches, what are they doing in practice? What you've got two months before the season starts. Are you not having any real open competition? Are you just giving a guy a job and saying it's yours and you take all the backup the scout team reps so you never really see what that kid can do? I mean, what are we yeah. doing? But this is not this is not just a Willie Taggart problem. This is a everybody in college football problem. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable just how how widespread how many, this is. Yeah. How many games have we watched where the starter went down, was playing like crap, and we look at each other, we start texting each other and saying, whoo, uh, I, I think the team that's leading this game and dominating this game is in trouble. Because yeah. I don't know who this new guy's going to be, but he's got to be better than that guy was. Oh, yeah. I, well, the kid at Ole Miss, right? It's time we've been right. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Um, I mean, Arkansas got it wrong. Now, that, that being said, we'll talk about A&M and Arkansas in a minute, but Ben Hicks came in, actually looked pretty good. But I don't know what that says about them or about Texas A&M, whatever. Um, and let, let's jump off of Alex Hornibrook in, uh, in Florida State because I think I think they're in good hands right now. Let's move into Penn State. This is another Friday game. Let's talk about Penn State and Maryland. And I'm not going to talk about the, the betting side of this, specifically for you. Let's just talk about the fact that James Franklin is always going to hold a grudge against Maryland. Now, if people don't remember this, James Franklin was there, along with Loxley, under Ralph Friedgen forever ago. And when Friedgen, like, got pushed aside, got, got lost the job, James Franklin had a deal done, basically, with the school to go on and be the head coach, and he got sideswiped, and they hired Randy Etzel. And he will always and forever hold a grudge for that. He got hired at Vanderbilt right after. And since then, I mean, the, the last two years, they had won 104 to 6 by a combined score. Last night, or Friday night, they won 59 to nothing. So, I mean, you're talking 160 whatever to 6 in the last three years. In Maryland, the trajectory that they are on, they won their first game by 79. They won their second one by, what, 43 or whatever it was, 43? Yeah, something, something ridiculous. They lost to Temple by three, and now they lost this one by 59. That They have gone the complete – it's a pendulum, right? It swung the complete other way. They looked I think absolutely this atrocious. SEC, man. I really do. I think this is, this is living in the world – Oh, and I guess they're a Big Ten. It's team. Big Ten. Jesus Christ, they've beaten up. They've beaten up on a couple of ACC teams where they they were really good when they when they whooped Syracuse up really good. Yeah. Um, man, I I don't know what to think of Maryland. You're right, James Franklin. This is personal, and some guys are just like that. They whatever it takes to motivate you, you use it, you do it. These teams don't like each other. I can't believe they went into Maryland and did that. Well, it, it here's what Maryland could do to stop it. Here's the so this was Penn State's breakout, right? Like we we've been waiting for this because they haven't looked yes, good against these other teams. Great. Uh, Maryland had three turnovers in this game. Penn State outgained them six hundred and nineteen yards to one twenty eight. I I don't. There's nothing to say. This was complete and utter dominate. This is what Mike Loxley looked like when he was at New Mexico. Let, let me ask you this though. All right, let's let's give it strictly a football run so we know Franklin's going to try to run it up if he can. Yeah. Maryland could not stop them, and Maryland could not score. Is this just a different in class of athlete? Is Penn State just that much bigger, stronger, and faster than them at every position on the football team? Yes. Yes, I, I want to say that. Then, then, um, at the end of the day, then that's what's supposed to happen, right? Now, if like, you look at like Maryland was somebody different than they are because of how badly they won their first. Yeah. How, yeah. How well they won their first two games. Anyway, yeah. they beat the hell out of the first two teams they played. So we thought they were somebody special, but those teams aren't real good. Well, no, they're not real good. And, and, I just think and this is what happens when a big boy team plays a little guy team, and Maryland's still a little guy. This is also what happens when you put everything you have on tape in the first two weeks. 
Right. Well, yeah, that happens too. That that is my fear for LSU. By the way, they have held nothing back yeah. going into league play. The whole playbook is out there for the world to see. Yeah, and and the thing is, there may be enough plays that it doesn't matter because you can't you can't be prepped for everything. But well. I mean, in this LSU case, has the athletes to at least hang with the other teams they're going to play. Exactly. Nobody's going to be more athletic other than Alabama. And if they play Georgia, yeah. but at, at the end of the day, that's a different story in this situation. You could have the plays. You could not have the plays. You ain't got the dudes. No, you're right about you that got off the truck and you couldn't win this game. All right. Let's talk about who should have more talent and who shouldn't. Let's talk about Texas A&M 31, Arkansas 27. Uh, I don't think Texas A&M is very good this year. Like, I think we grossly overestimated them. Big wrong. Arkansas outgained them 395 yards to 340. The Razorbacks held A&M to only 89 yards rushing. Now, to be fair, Auburn held them to 56, and Clemson held them to 53. Colorado State had 220 rushing yards against Arkansas. And, yes, it was a a different style of game. I get that. A&M... Talent wise, should have been able to dominate this team. They look like complete crap. They look awful. I, I might be a year or two off of on AM and Mon might might just not be the guy. This he regressed. The we were talking about where the best thing that could happen for AM is he go down. I don't know. I don't know who's behind him. It, I that, see, that's I that's the thing. It. I don't want somebody to get hurt, but he he just doesn't he doesn't look great. He can no. He can run the ball. He's a hell of an athlete. He now he'll be back next year. They will have more experience next year. They've got a better schedule next year. Man, I, that's just that's that may be a lost cause. Like A and M. Is it weird that that A and M defense is so? You're, 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 you're breaking up real bad, so I don't mean to keep talking over you. If I am, I no, no, no. You're all good. You're actually you were breaking up a little bit it, as well. Is it weird that that A and M defense is the only thing holding on to this team right now? They held Clemson. Now Clemson's offense has struggled, but they held Clemson to hold not a whole lot. Like twenty four points. Held Auburn to not a whole lot, and we thought maybe Auburn's offense just isn't real good. I, I, they looked pretty damn good yesterday. Yeah. Like I, I think A and M's defense, which I was not expecting because of how much they lost last year and how young they are. They're highly recruited, but they're all really young. I think that defense is the only thing holding this team together right now. Hey, you might be right. I mean, my, Mike Elko. Is a problem. Mike Elko is a fantastic coach. He this is, is a Jimbo problem. Jim's got to get this figured out. Yeah, he really does. He really does. They did not pay him seventy five million guaranteed for this kind of crap. I, I will guarantee you that. I love Jimbo, I love him. I believe in him. All right, let's move on. Number eleven. Before we get to our extra points and uh, and our top ten, this is. A very surprising development. Wake Forest 27, Boston College 24. Wake Forest is now 5-0 and on the season. Jamie Newman, 21 out of 33, 243 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. He had 23 carries for 102 yards rushing. Their schedule, they have a bye week coming up this week. And then they host Louisville, Florida State, and NC State all in a row so they, they could easily get to 8-0. Then they've got at Virginia Tech, which as bad as they have been, it doesn't matter if they're going on the road. They could be 9-0 by the time Clemson comes, or, but by the time they go to Clemson, which would be November 16th. Now, after that, they've got Duke coming in, and they've got at Syracuse to close out the season. Yep. But what Dave Clawson has done there, if tell me this. From just a job perspective, if he were to take this team to like ten and two, do you have to jump from Wake at that point? Like, do you have to strike I, while the iron's hot? I don't, because at the end of the day, right now, you you're the you're the only thing going in the ACC that's hot. It is it is your program, Virginia Duke, who I think they think they're equivalents to those schools. And then you have Clemson that's just a whole step above them. But unless you're getting a job, Ohio State ain't coming open. Alabama True. ain't coming open. Clemson ain't coming open. Oklahoma's not coming open. So so I don't know that there's a job that the situation's going to be so much better. What about USC? I, 
<laughs> that's the whole reason I brought it up. Because I don't think they want to hire I Urban Meyer. did not even think of that. I think he would fit well. He's great at rebuilding programs. Uh, the offense that he runs is fun and exciting. I, I'm just just throwing it out there. I, I don't want. I like what he's doing at Wake. That's a but that's I, a tough. I'd one. rather see him take that job than Urban Meyer. I don't want to see Urban college football. <laughs> I didn't even think. I don't know why my brain didn't go there. Now they're not those other four schools I named anymore, but. Do you just jump? No. All right. Do you leave that job for South Carolina? No. Do you leave that job for Virginia Tech? No. No. Those were historically better programs and better schools than Wake. They're not today. You don't jump for that. If USC calls, that's a different conversation, man. Yeah. That's that's just a different beast. Yeah, I think you got to take that. All right. Let's uh, let's move into. I've only got one extra point here, and we'll we'll chat it up for a second. I'm going to give you the 18 undefeated teams. Just roll through them, all right? Okay. Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, LSU. So that's the first four. None surprising there. Next, we've got Ohio State, Oklahoma, Auburn, Wisconsin. I think Auburn and Wisconsin may be a little bit surprising. Yes. Before, If you're talking about before the season started. Well, yeah, before Auburn. the season started. Yeah. Uh, the next four, Florida, Penn State, Iowa, Boise State. Based on schedules... Maybe not surprising. Yeah. Next four, App State, Baylor, Memphis, Minnesota. Now, Memphis, no, because they, they were season ranked. Yeah, they were favored in all of them. Teams to begin with. Baylor getting a win over Iowa State. That was the only thing that would keep them from it. Uh, App State, a little App bit surprising. State, absolutely massive. Yeah. Minnesota has won every game that they have played by one score. Last night, they were beating the brakes off of Purdue, and I just felt. Yeah, you were close. I was fine. I was okay. I was bad. I probably And then I just kept checking me hope. Just don't make me believe in something. And then just <laughs> rip my pants down. This just, just oh, yeah. God. Oh. All right, now I'm going to give you the last two. Who we just talked about, Wake Forest. And then Southern Methodist University, SMU. SMU, baby. That's right. It, I asked you a few weeks ago, is this SMU team actually really good? So when you asked me that, I had paid zero attention to them. And so I was like, Gary's pretty connected. He's in these things. He pays a lot closer attention to analytics than I do. He, he pays attention to all 130 teams way closer than I do. So I started watching them. Watched them last week. Beat the hell out of South Florida. Then, they, then I watched them this week. He's like, yeah, man, that's a that's a really that's good a really good team. football team. Anybody who says the American is not good has not watched SMU, has not watched that they, they all watched UCF because for years they've been good. Yeah, they're not watching Memphis, they're not watching Cincinnati, who still has a loss, but it's to Ohio State. Like, but not they're not watching some of these other schools that are really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, you ready to move into the top 10? Come on. All right. Our Winning Cures Everything top 10 after week five of the college football season in 2019. I'm going to go on. Do you want me to give my full top 10 and then you give yours? Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's do that. I'll start at number 10. If we do one and two. Let's, uh, let's, uh, Let's start off with number 10. I've got Notre Dame at number 10. Now, this is going to change weekly because it's it's based on what we have seen through the season so far. I've got Notre Dame at number 10. I've got number 9, Wisconsin. I think they took a step back yesterday. I think they had some uh, some issues. And, and it may have just been, you know, such a letdown after beating the crap out of Michigan. Number 8, I moved Penn State into the top 10. I think they finally had their breakthrough. They showed what they're capable of. They are uh, they're undefeated. They are a legit threat in the Big 10. Number 7, I've got Clemson. Um, they looked pretty bad, and they, they may not even deserve to be in the top ten. I just I know that I have seen their talent absolutely dominate people before. I know that that's a good coaching staff. I expect them to get this thing fixed, but I've got Clemson at seven. Number six, I've got Oklahoma. Uh, they still have not beaten anybody of any substance or whatever, but they are still a fantastic football team. 
Same thing for number five, Alabama, and you can even have them flip-flopped if you want to. Uh, Alabama gets a win over Ole Miss yesterday. Defense gives up points late. It's whatever. Number four, I've got Auburn. Number three, I've got LSU. Number two, Georgia, who I still think is the most complete team. I think they've got the best defense in the country. And then number one, I've got Ohio State. All right, now uh, now roll with your top ten. Let me know what you got. Yep, have we lost you? So I only look at the five. Don't care about last year. I don't care about preseason. Don't care okay. about any of that stuff. I bounced Oregon out for Penn State. I'm with you on that. Um, not that I don't love Oregon still, but I got an undefeated Penn State. They're still in. I got Notre Dame at nine. I think they've got the best loss in the country, and they're still a complete team. Everybody above them is undefeated. I, I got to make that matter. I have Clemson at eight. I have Bama at nine. I think neither one of them have played anybody. Bama has at least looked incredible playing everybody they've played. I have Ohio State at Alabama, I'm with you on that. Alabama and Ohio, or, oh, I'm sorry, OU. Alabama and OU are basically interchangeable. They haven't played anybody, but they've dusted everyone. They're doing exactly what I expect them to do to people. Yeah. After that, I dropped the two bye teams just because I don't have the, an extra game to look at them. And that makes the three sense. teams that are above them, I think, were impressive, which is Georgia and LSU. Um, I think those that is, that is just basically the, they're the same team, what they've done. Georgia has a much better win. I don't know if it's better. LSU's win at Texas might not be a whole lot different than Georgia's win at home against Notre Dame. But and then you've got Ohio State, Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati's quarterback went down. They were dominating the game before he went down. Didn't matter. They're killing everybody. They're a little bit better. Than Ohio State or than Oklahoma and Alabama, but but their strength of schedule is nothing right now. It's going to get hard. Wisconsin, Wisconsin has a fantastic win against Michigan at home, and they've beaten the hell out of everybody else. That's why they're above Ohio State. And then Auburn, Auburn has the best resume today, right now. They've got the three biggest wins. Mississippi State is better than any team Alabama, Ohio State, and Oklahoma have played. They just are, and they just thrashed them to nothing. Yeah. And they've got the win against Oregon, who I think is really good, just barely inching out of the top ten, and um, a, a win. Texas A&M. Against, um, oh, God, who was the big uh, – who? Texas A&M. Yeah, oh, a win in College A&M Station. Last week. Yeah, yeah A&M might not be that great, but they did do both of those games on the road. Yeah, so, I, and I can totally understand where you're coming from on that. Good gracious. All right, that is going to wrap up the college football recap for week number five. Uh, as always, show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. Go find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Leave us some nice reviews. We would appreciate it. We appreciate you guys watching the show, listening to the show. Uh, catch up with us. Get us on Twitter. Tell us uh, tell us what you think about the show. We would love to hear it. Chris, I think that's going to wrap it up, buddy. You uh, you ready to go watch some NFL football? Yeah, we're getting real close to kick off. Yes, we are. All right, that's going to wrap it up. We will see you guys again next go round. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.